What's good, YouTube family? It's your boy S Crab Blends back again with another barber tutorial. And today we're going to do a real tight kind of a drop fade effect, leaving the parietal ridge area a little bit fuller, giving it more of that square look. And then, you know, just like a little messy look on top. So in the back, as you can see, it looks like it's been a little, you know, closer and tighter in the back. So I wanted to just kind of float off that parietal ridge area, but we're doing a number three all the way around in the parietal ridge area. And we're going to start out by kind of doing a drop fade technique and then we'll start working our way up. So we did the number three, just kind of floating off that parietal ridge area, going straight up. So there again, as we fade, we can keep more of a square uh, look, you know, in that area. So now we went ahead and dropped to a number two open and then we'll close that number two. But we just work that all the way around the head, blending into that number three guard. Because I already have in mind that I want to kind of drop the back a little bit, I will start dropping in the back with those larger guards as well. So with the number three, I kind of dropped a little bit lower. With the number two, I'll drop, you know, a little bit lower in the back as well. So that way, whenever I set my bald guideline, you know, I can kind of do that drop fade effect as well. So once again, we did the number three right off the parietal ridge, just straight up. Number two open and then number two closed right into that number three. Usually whenever I do a fade, it doesn't matter if I'm fading up or fading down the whole time. I usually always start off by clearing out the bulk, you know, so I can have a good foundation to fade into. So I always, almost every single cut, do the fade down technique. If I don't do it all the way down to the bald, I'll at least go down to, you know, like a, a one and a half or something like that. But I, I want to have a good foundation so I can you know, see what I'm fading into. So we went ahead and did the three closed and then the two open and the two closed into that number three. Now we're doing a one and a half guard open into that closed two. Many people ask, hey, where do you get your one and a half guards or your half guards for the purple magnetic uh, guards that I have? And I get them off Amazon. I'll try to find a link to put down in the description. Uh, but yeah, so I get my purple magnetic guards off of Amazon. And some people say, man, how do you get those purple magnetic guards to fit on your wall seniors? Um, I have a bracket on there that allows me to put on the master blade. And then I use the purple guards on the master blade. So now that I laid a good foundation, I just kind of lightly edge up the front. And then I'm going to go ahead and just lightly edge up the C cup area just because it'll give me a better visual of where I want to create my bald guideline. Back to the purple magnetic guards. Let me say this real quick. As you see, whenever I'm doing more of a drop fade, I usually start over the ear. That way I can kind of round down towards the front and then round down towards the back. Then we clean up underneath that and just carry it on around the head. But anyways, back to the purple magnetic guards and the bracket. Um, if you do not have a bracket, I modified my own and there's some different videos you can watch. But actually, uh, there's someone on Instagram uh, named Filthy Blends, P-H-I-L-T-Y Blends, I believe with a Z. And you can look him up and he actually sells the brackets and you can get those brackets for your master blades and you can put them on your wall seniors or your magic clips or whatever so back to the cut we went ahead and did more of there again that that drop fade guideline for that bald guideline and then we're just going to come in and you know shave it out i was obviously using my uh, babyless trimmers 
here lately some people been asking you know like why did you put the gold blade on your silver ones i dropped my my silver ones and and uh just kind of knocked some teeth off so i just put that gold blade from other babyless trimmers on there that's the only reason i like the way both of those blades hit i actually like the way the uh the black blades hit really nice but being i broke the teeth i just switched them out um so anyways we're gonna come in and create our second guideline and i have the uh, blade fully open and we're just going to take it up a good inch inch and a half there again he wanted this to be more of a tight fade but a stretch fade he wanted it to stretch low and he wanted it to you know end low as far as where it goes transitions into that bald he wanted that to be low but he wanted it to be tight and come up more to a squared angle so that way when he kind of does some messy look on the top uh you know that it would give him the look that he's going for so i did my best to to do that so i just wanted to show you guys exactly what i did there again to get those more of those stretch fades where it's not just real dark you know and then at the very bottom you just flick it out it's it's a stretch fade it's that fade is just slowly stretching out um, and it's usually tighter to the head how i do that is there again i start my guideline low but i stretch out those those you know second and third guidelines i want to kind of stretch those out um, so that way i have more to work with it just stretches that blend out so once I, you know, put in that second guideline with the blade open, then I closed the blade halfway and went, you know, right in the middle between my bald guideline and that second guideline I did. And then I closed the blade all the way up to just tap at that bottom line. And now I come in with uh, just the corner of my trimmer to, to bounce around. I just kind of bounce around at that line. And to me, it's like if you had a straight line, a solid line, and you were to keep, you know, just like chipping away at that line, it wouldn't be a solid line anymore, right? And that's what I kind of do with my trimmer on a solid line. I just use the corner of it to just kind of tap. Sometimes I do this little zigzag motion, just, just kind of rubbing up against that line, just tap, 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 just to knock out, you know, to break up the, the solidness of that line. Now we jumped in with the zero guard and we took it up about another inch you know three quarters of an inch just kind of stretching this fade out and to be honest with you guys you know once i jump into something and i look at it a little bit later like in this video i think man i wish i just would have went in with an open one first and try to tie those together and then close that one and then i could have tapped at it with that zero guard because i feel like the zero guard is kind of it's still so close to that open blade that is creating a little bit, you know, it's creating a line in that area. And, uh, and he wanted it darker towards the top and there again, stretch out. And we give him that look, but I almost wish I would have kept it a little bit darker uh, just for my preference. He loved the cut. However, you know, it is what it is. You live and you learn. And I wanted to be totally transparent with you guys. But so we did that that zero open and then we dropped a little bit lower and did the zero close trying to t tie, you know, that together. And now we're going with the, the one open and the one closed, uh, you know, so we'll go up with that one open and just blend right into, you know, what the foundation we laid earlier. And then we'll close it tapping around trying to get any lines out. And I noticed kind of right above where I'm at right now, there's a dark spot that I have to come in. And I realize that I can always come in later with my shear over comb. Uh, if you've watched any of my videos, one of the things you know about me is that, man, I just try to go in and lay a good foundation. And uh, there's different spots like that spot I see that I know I can come back in later with shear over comb or blending shear over comb. I don't spend a whole lot of time trying to make the blend perfect with my clippers because I feel like I have more control with my shears and some people may not feel that way but I do so in the back you'll see that that where we dropped it we're stretching it out even further so instead of doing like a a one inch guideline I'm doing like you know almost two inch guideline 
uh, from the bald to that second guideline that I created and uh, and the reason being is because I want to still have that drop in the back but I do want it to stretch uh, you know and I need that to, to all tie in towards the top as well if that makes sense so I'll come in and clean up you know those little lines in the bottom in a little bit but we kind of laid a good foundation and then I come back up with you know my zero guard and you know go up another inch with it open and then I'll close it and try to tie those panels together now in this area is where we have to tie the back of the blend to the side of the blend and obviously we want it to be a little fuller in the back and have that drop effect so I have to fade down at an angle so where I was fading straight across on the side now towards that back corner where I'm at that blends into the back I'm going I'm keeping my clipper at an angle to give it you know to blend in an angle and uh, and anyway so we're just tying that side together and I don't know about you guys let me know in the comments but how many of you besides myself hate those side panels I mean sometimes you know it's like hey you know it's a good challenge or whatever but it definitely can be a pain in the butt when you get the side blended nice and then you get the back blended nice and then you have to come in in that back corner you know right kind of behind the ear on both sides you have to tie those together to make that blend look you know like it flows all the way around anyway so same technique you know that we did on the side we we do in the back uh, we did the the open guard or the open blade rather then we close it halfway working our way down towards the bar bald line and then we close it all the way knocking the bald line out then we took it up a step with a zero guard you know made that second guideline then we closed it blending the open blade into that you know and now we're going in with that one open and just kind of blending right into to you know that tying it together and then we'll close it just to really you know knock out that line right there you know there again being mindful that i'm dropping this so i needed to come down at an angle so that it kind of gives that drop fade in the back look there again some people might say man this is a high fade in my opinion it's not a high fade and now I know that the rules have changed over the years and some people say this is a high fade and then there's mid fades and low fades whenever I was coming up and I've been in this for I've been cutting for 28 years back in the day this would have been considered a low fade and the reason being is because the stubble of that hair where it goes from bald to starting to grow hair is low where we created our first guideline and and even though it may be tighter it still ends down there you know what i mean so here we are working on that corner again uh and as you'll see whenever i lift up his front bangs and stuff it's a drop fade in the sense that it's tight but as you can see that c cup goes all the way down towards the bottom and i'm not going to show you the other side just because it's the same process but i i came down with a number one guard just knocking out some of those loose hairs and as you can see on his on his edge it's kind of sparse and I don't want to take it up too high so I'm just kind of I went to the middle section because really that was his highest section and I just kind of lightly tapped at it and I'm being real gentle I'm, I don't care if the line is real sharp and harsh on his front I don't want to go too far up so I'm just kind of being lighter with it especially being he kind of lets the top you know has this messy look on top cleaning up the lineup now we're doing the uh the color enhancement with the sean cuts hair color card and if you go to seancutshair.com you can actually use scraft 20 and get 20 percent off your whole purchase if you want color cards or whatever only for the month of august so you only have like two days left so we're coming in and uh you know just hitting them up with a razor uh, it's always best if you want to go up against the grain just to lean them back in the chair now i'm going to come in with sheer over comb and uh, my technique there was kind of sloppy, just both blades moving. I try to usually keep that bottom blade still and just let the top blade move, but who cares, right? <laughs> if it gets the job done, it gets the job done. 
So I'm just kind of cleaning that up. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and, and throw a little, you know, clay in his hair, give him the messy look. He likes a little wild looking. And then I'll just come in with my blending shears, working around the head, touching it up. Now I'm not gonna spin him around, the, you know, in the chair and give y'all the whole view because you see the fade on this side, you've seen the fade on the other side. It's blurry, the back was blurry. Um, some people say, why don't you do the, the 360 spin at the end? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. And whenever I'm in a hurry to just record these videos for you guys, my next customer's waiting. And sometimes it's like, I can't take the time to keep spinning. And, uh, but I feel like this is, you know, a good view. So, Hey, if you liked it, make sure you subscribe, hit that thumbs up button and uh, all that good stuff until next time. God bless you guys. If you're not following me on IG, S period craft underscore blends. Make sure you follow. Much love. Peace.